to be here today to honor all the bravery and loyalty of those who served us in Vietnam. Many of you know that the fall of Saigon happened two years after the America, American military left Vietnam. They fought to an agreed stalemate in 1973, and the last American troops departed in their entirety in March of 1973. There were almost twice as many casualties in Southeast Asia after the fall of Saigon in 1975 than there, then, than there were during the 10 years the U.S. was involved in Vietnam. Unfortunately, this is when I was born. In 1973, when I was only a few months old. Sorry. I was abandoned in a marketplace. A civilian found, found me and took me in to an orphanage in Saigon. I was taking care of a nun named Sister Kateri. 35 years later, I found Sister Kateri and I gave her a call. As a matter of fact, she is now in the United States counseling those who came back with post-traumatic stress disorder. She told me when she was caring for me in Vietnam that it was getting worse. So they were just trying to find birth certificates for babies in order to get them out of the country and quickly. And that sometimes they would give a deceased birth certificate to another abandoned infant. And that although my birthday was not correct, it was close. So we always celebrated my birthday on June 1st. As I st started getting older, I stopped counting. <laughs> in March of 1974, when I was about nine months old, Sister Kateri flew me and another infant boy to the United States. I was greeted there by my adoptive mother and father. Amer they were both American, um, and my two-year-old new brother, um, John. We were the first infants to be adopted through the Catholic Relief Services from Vietnam. We arrived in LaGuardia Airport. My mom was half Hungarian and half German, and my father was Italian. This was my new family, and this is where I began my new life. At the age of five, I remember my mom dressing me up in a navy blue dress with white trim, a white hat, pigtails, and a red bow tie. The newspaper man came to my house to take a picture of me holding the flag with my brother standing beside me. I was going to become a legal citizen. We went to the courthouse and there were lots of strangers there. After lots of practice, when it was my time, I stood up proudly and put my hand on my heart and said the Pledge of Allegiance out loud. To this day, tears swell in my eyes even when I say the Pledge of Allegiance or hear the national anthem, because this is the land of the free and the home of the brave. Amen. I decided to stop and touch the wall. I immediately felt the heat the sun absorbed on that wall. It felt like a bolt, bolt of emotion suddenly going through me. I could not let go. I stood there and wept. I wept for all those Americans spanning all races, ages, religions, and social classes. I wept for sac them sacrificing their lives and their families for our freedom. I wept, wept for those who were still lost. I read a quote that says, in war, there are no unwounded soldiers.
Stay safe, stay warm, stay free.